So I'm always trying to encourage us to always um, not be a waster of our time, our money, our talent, you know, our uh, resources, our efforts, and our energy. That is one of my core beliefs. I try my best never to do that. Um, I also try to encourage others not to do that because they have to be, you got to be very discerning. You got to be very aware that things come to distract you. Okay. Do not allow things to distract you. So as we were uh, having those different discussions about uh, organized religion and whatnot, um, that same channel that I was uh, referring to uh, that did have that very, very great uh, discussion. Well, you know, the, the young people, um, one, two, I think it was about four, four young people were um, expressing uh, or giving their account of how and why they left uh, organized religion. They call it church, but a lot of people, they don't know that there's a difference between organized religion and the church. We are the church, the body. The human body is the temple of the Lord. Um, so, but, uh, so, but I didn't watch the videos, but I, you know, I scrolled through to see what else was there because I already know that just because they had that one good discussion, they have an agenda. Yeah, uh, you know, a lot of people. Because every time I, it's it never fails me. I'll hear people saying something really awesome, and then boom, they'll leak, try to lead you right back into the church. I'll be like, or you know what I mean by church. So for this, for the sake of video and having discussions, I'm saying church. So they'll, but they'll lead you. They want to lead you right back into organized religion, right back into tithing, right back into everything that is contrary to God. So I'm always like, you know, always, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? I can't think of the word, but I'm always on guard and always know that that's exactly where they're trying to take an individual. So I was saying bravo to the discussion, but I already know. That they're trying, to, they have an agenda for whatever that was. It's not to for other for us to be aware that we have no business in the building, but it's to try to do. They're gonna do do something. It's to bring people back into that building so that people can cause be to start tithing and and doing all the other nonsense that goes on within that building. Because if you know that because uh, and I was so it was so refreshing I was like oh you know I was loving what they were saying because this one young man he was like you know he how do, during the pandemic because I always say this so many things have been exposed during this pandemic so many things I mean I can't even count all of them they're just so rich you know it's like wow you know but so many things have been exposed and this guy was this young man was saying uh you know, if we got all the, we've been uh, have given all these offerings and all for all of these years, and during the pandemic, they weren't seeing people. People had lost their job. People were were sick. People were frightened. People all you know didn't have did this, didn't have that. But the church, in quotes, never stepped up to give a dime of fine fine of any type of financial. It didn't step up to become a financial resource or a food source or a source of encouragement all it was was taking taking and taking okay uh, these are my words some of them but that's what he was saying then another young lady she was like uh, if I think well the young man said if another young uh, man said it first and then she piggybacked off of it but what they were saying in essence is that if you had a thriving church church bringing in all of this money in a neighborhood, well, the neighborhood should reflect what what's happening in the church. You know, the church should be aiding individuals and helping individuals. I mean, I, you shouldn't, and that is the truth. You, I mean, that's why we know it's wrong, but we still keep going. We know it's wrong. You know it's wrong because so many of these little churches are in really poor neighborhoods but all of this crime and uh blight and 
every, all you know different different things horrible things are happening in these neighborhoods but none of these churches step up to the ball to the uh to the plate to do anything different for these neighborhoods if i mean come on now even in your own neighborhood even in your own household you it, uh, you know, you make things better, whether it's cooking a good meal, whether it's keeping your house clean, keeping your, your environment clean outside. You, you're doing something to make things better, right? You know what I'm saying? So, but the church never does anything to make things better. It's just a hole that people keep sinking their money into. What was that one? It used to be a movie. There was a movie called something. These people had bought this house, this old house, and they thought that they were getting ready to renovate it or rehab it or whatever. And it was just a sinking hole, they, a money pit. <laughs> I think it was called money pit. But that was those were very good observations. And then one, the other, the same young lady was also talking about, and the, and the, the gentleman that I spoke about first also were can were seeing things from a different vantage point because they were well not her but her husband uh was but this young man he was uh also he was involved as staff so you see things differently from a different uh different vantage point and you're like hmm, you saying one thing but you know you see it a different thing or you you hearing one thing but you see it something different you know what i'm saying so talking out of the two sides talk about talking out of the two sides of somebody's mouth you know what i'm saying then a, another young lady because i say it was just four participants besides i think the, the besides the moderator um, was saying that she didn't feel like she said a few things, but definitely she said that what she knew church to be, it was not, and it never drew her in. Like she never wanted to participate in anything, which is how, thank God, oh God, I was coming out. But although I was feeling like, oh, this can't be good, but. I just did not want to be bothered. I was sickened by it. I was tired of it. I was just, I could not go. I had just stopped going, period. I was just like, mm -mm. I was, even though I was making excuses because I was in school at the time too. But even when I was not in school, I still was saying, I'm, I'm not going. I'm in school. Because I just could not. It was just so draining. It was just so draining. It was like me against a world. Because it, I was, basically. Because all of them was doing one thing, thinking one thing, saying one thing, living one way. And I was like, mm -mm, this is wrong. And I would always address the pastor. Uh, this is this is this this is that. Let's do this. Let's do that. Oh no, the people they not ready for that. Or they would be making up all. Oh, he was, and he's so not a leader and so not uh, a strong, courageous person at all. Very weak. Very weak. Um, and these are at um, these are my um, um, what do you call them? My own um, observations. I'm not putting him down per se. I'm just giving you the, the rundown of how it was. So anyway, those things that the people said was really, really awesome, were really, really awesome. But but I, what, I, what I was getting ready to say is that I know there's an agenda for it. So I just kind of looked through, like, you know, I went to the description, try to see what the channel was about, of course. Then I just kind of said, okay, let me see what the videos they have. And I saw some about black and Africa and African and all that. I was like, oh, no, I already know that it's divisive. Because why are we talking about that? These things come to steal, kill, and destroy, and to steal your time and to, to distract you from what the real work of Christ Jesus is uh, and means. Anybody that starts talking to you about race and all of that is wrong. You know who you are. You know who you. You know what I'm saying. You know that you're. Uh, if you, whether whatever you are, you know where you what you are. You know, but then to start talking about pre uh, people being prejudiced again, people have been prejudiced since the beginning of time. You better stop letting all of these foolish things get the best of you. If nothing else, overcome it with love. That's why the, the New Testament's 
commandment is to love the Lord your God with all of your soul, your might, your strength, every, every fiber of your being, and your neighbor as yourself. When you love the right way, and I'm not talking about jumping in the bed with somebody because people think that's love <laughs> or some other nonsense, gushy, gushy and gooey, you know. Uh, is you know, but when you actually love a person, you could care less about all of that other stuff, and you will love this person into a submission, <laughs> okay? Or you know, maybe you'll sow a seed of love, and then on and on and on, other things will begin to happen, and you know, people change, people can change, but. To think that you can fight prejudice and and tell you how about you making people aware of it and we 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 this and we're that or you know just I, I'm just not into that I know who who I I know that I'm an African born in America or in wherever I was born or whatever they're called you know I know who I am I could. You know, but that that does not so that's not gonna get me into heaven. That's not gonna give me any points with God. That's not gonna keep you know keep me on straight and narrow. It draws me back. It will be an impediment. It will not be something that will uh, 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 be an uh, an accelerant. Okay, it will not. It would decrease a person actually. So be very very careful what you involve yourself into. And all of, <laughs> I was just thinking somebody had left a, a comment on a, a Facebook post that I was had on somebody else. It was just ridiculous. And I was like, oh, this poor person, this, this poor person. But nonetheless, be careful, okay? It, it, all of these things are divisive. They're very divisive and, again, distracting, very distracting, Okay, and yes, Jesus did come say, I did come to divide the, the mother against, uh, you know, and you know, the mother against the mother in law, I mean, uh, the daughter in law, by and 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 on and on and on. But that he's talking about something that's totally different. Okay, so be careful when you're quoting your little scriptures and that you, and all of this stuff and getting, you know, t uh, regurgitating what you heard from your Bible studies of uh, of them and stuff like that. But anyway, I'm going to get off of here. Just want to encourage us to be careful with all of this race relations and color and prejudices and uh, judge uh, uh, and, you know, all of these different things. These things are here, okay? Jesus said the poor will be with us always. All of these are sub-poor, uh, <laughs> sub poverty, sub poor things. There will be with us. The way to overcome is always going to be through the Spirit of God, through love. That's all I can say. It's got to be through love. It's got to be through love. That's the only way to overcome all of these things. So I'll talk to you later. Bye bye for now.